Hey guys, as you know, I've been out on safari recently and uh, there's quite a few lessons that I've learned, which I'm about to share in a few um, videos. So follow along, but just make sure you don't make this mistake when you're out shooting safari. I'll paint the picture. So, you know, you've combined a holiday with a photography tour and there's a lot going on. The agenda's tight, the itinerary's tight. Um, it can be quite tiring. You've got to organize accommodation. You've got to get to accommodation. There's a lot of driving, yada, yada, yada. Plus, you've got to think of all your photography gear and so forth and so on. So it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, but if you take a little bit of time out just to plan and prepare, you're going to be okay. So after a lot of planning, a lot of prepping, checking your gear, doing a lot of stuff, you're out on safari, you get up nice and early, there's a lot of anticipation, you've got a day ahead of you of driving, of potential animal sightings, of all sorts of landscape scenarios, you're pumped, you're excited, you're up, you're gone, you know. You never know what's going to come around the corner when you're on safari, right? Um, these particular locations you're almost guaranteed to see animals um, it's just the way they've structured water holes and the way they've organized these things it's just certain animals the likelihood of seeing them is not particularly good leopards would be one cheetahs apparently in itosha there's there's quite a, a bit to, to see um, so you never know what it is you're going to see so this particular morning we were driving around Soon after we hit the safari, we're still in golden hour. I've sort of got my um, Lumix G9 with a 100 to 400 um, set up. My wife's driving, I'm in the passenger seat. I got the 100 to, um, what, I beg your pardon, the 12 to 60 millimeter on the G7, which I'm shoot shooting now. So I sort of got my wide bases covered and I can get reasonably close with a 60 mil and I've got my telephoto for zooming in. Um, but like I said, you never know what's going to happen. And we took, came around this one corner, lo and behold, there's a whole pack of hyenas moving across. I'm in the passenger side, my wife's driving, they're on that side of the vehicle, so not the best. I grab my camera, check out the light conditions, see, oh, I'm just going to put it in I, auto ISO and start firing away with some photos. But like I said, these animals were moving quite quickly. And it was difficult to adjust, difficult to, you're not allowed to get out of your vehicle. So I'm kind of restricted in this passenger side um, with this monopod, which um, is a godsend in my opinion. If you're out and about in either a safari vehicle or doing a self-drive, it'll be, after a while, it'll be get tiring holding this 100 to 400 up so my suggestion would be the monopod i might do a short little video on the sure uh, tripod which i've got which does convert into the monopod but i found it like i said a real godsend and um, you can adjust it perfect height in the car to take photos this way but like i said you're kind of restricted because you've got this window and they're moving across quite quickly the point I'm trying to make is with the camera setup these days is you've got your dial and you've got your custom modes. Use these custom modes, assign them to a particular group of settings so that when, you, when you're in a particular situation, you can quickly flick to that custom mode and bang, the settings are done. Shutter speeds set, apertures preset, ISO is preset by one quick turn of the dial. I didn't do that, even though I did a video on using the custom modes, I didn't take my own advice on Safari, and I got caught out in this particular situation with the result being that I only managed to get one half decent photo of a hyena. Um, if I was better prepared, if I'd given some forethought to that type of scenario, I would have maybe gotten a few more good pictures. Look. A lot of the time you're dealing with kind of um, slower animals, there's maybe elephant around, there's some giraffe, there's maybe wildebeest, and a lot of the time they st they're stationary or they're eating. But there are occasions, we had both scenarios where there was a few lions on the move and there was these hyenas 
on the move. So just give some forethought to the different potential scenarios you may encounter when you're on safari. Consider your setup. Consider the fact that you're in a vehicle, either like I said, a safari vehicle. You may be uh, flanked by people on both sides, so try and get a uh, um, seat on the edge, even though you'll be the first one to get, <laughs> you'll be the snack of the day, uh, but no, they, you'll be fine. I only, I'm, I'm just joking. Um, so yeah, even if you're doing a self-drive around um, Itasha or any other game parks, like I said, just make sure your setup is comfortable. There are times, and there was one occasion, where I could use the tripod in a beautiful location. Uh, I, I showed it in a previous video I made, sort of covering my trip to Itosha. If you haven't watched that video, please do, because I tack on some of the photos at the end, um, just to give you an idea of what the um, wildlife was like there. So the theme of today's video was the benefit of using custom modes. And the lesson here is using them in whatever scenario you may find yourself. You may be a wildlife photographer, landscape photographer, sports, whatever the case may be. There may be one, two, three, or four different setting scenarios, I mean, yeah, scenarios, which you may be able to assign to those custom modes and they'll come in real handy. You'll be able to get to those settings real quickly. Look, I'm not experienced at all, so this was a big lesson for me. The more safaris you do, the more um, accustomed you're going to get, the more experienced we're going to get, and then we will um, eventually nail it. I managed to nail some photos uh, because, like I said, settings were right, the environment was, was right, um, or the environment was conducive, um, and I sort of managed to capture that. So just be mindful, give some thought. If you are planning on going on a safari, check your gear out. Make sure you've got the ability to quickly change from a telephoto le lens to wide without having to change lens. In the Itosha, it's quite dusty, the wind's blowing, so there's the strong potential for dust to get onto your sensor. So you want to be in a situation where you ideally don't have to change lens. I had the G7 with me, which I put this lens on it, so if I needed to go wide or just a little bit, I could with the G7, and this one was exclusively for bringing um, animals a lot closer. And then that, coupled with having your custom modes set, you're gonna be well on your way to being proactive when it comes to whatever scenarios get thrown at you. Maybe the night before, just check your settings, look at, you know, uh, think about the animals you're going to be potentially coming across. Giraffes, for example, they're quite slow and they thought of, so, you know, you've got a bit of time in manual mode to set. But like I said, these particular hyenas, for some reason, they were in a pack and they were, they were on the move. They were moving. We bumped into some lions too. Similar scenario, but they were a bit slower. They were a bit more lethargic and I had a bit more time to react to get my settings sorted in manual mode. And I'm not that experienced still to be to quickly get to my settings, you know, that I need to be at. And that's where those custom modes come in real handy. So I hope I've hammered home the point, the benefit of these custom modes, because they really can save the day and at the very least give you a couple of photos that's going to be half decent. It can be, like I said, quite challenging to um, in that restrictive environment, especially in a car. I saw one guy leaning right out of the car, sitting on the car door, using the roof of the vehicle to steady himself, and he must have got some amazing shots. So he was still technically in the vehicle, but uh, they tell you do not get out of your vehicle, and for obvious reasons. So that is the... Um, situation when you find yourself in a safari vehicle or doing a self-drive that can be a little compact just through. If the animals are on your side, it is fine because we got the camera bang on this side, no problem shooting there. These hyenas were on the driver's side, so I had the small window and that sort of compounded 
the situation a little bit. So just keep that sort of in mind. Um, ask your driver to maybe turn the vehicle around so that you on the animal side, uh, if possible. There's other vehicles around, so just be mindful of that. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd just share that with you. Get your custom modes organized, get them pre-set up. Think of the different scenarios and you'll be well on your way. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Aperture 2 Zoom, as the name implies. We're going to cover from A to Z, Aperture 2 Zoom, everything around photography and videography and the different concepts, lessons, tips, tricks we can use to improve our photography and or videography. Uh, so if that sort of uh, resonates with you, consider hitting the like button, subscribe, follow along. Join us, comment, uh, be part of this journey. It is a fantastic one. It's exciting. I'm enjoying making these videos and sharing the lessons with you. There are quite a few uh, to share. So um, thanks for joining. Thanks for spending a little bit of time watching this video. If you got through to the end, well done. I appreciate that. And um, we will no doubt catch up in the next video. Over and out. Bye-bye.